Yesterday, the Jewish people marked the end of Passover. Passover is the holiday in which we celebrate our first step to nationhood, the exodus from slavery in Egypt and the beginning of our ancestors' journey to the land of Israel. The Jewish people set out for the promised land 3,500 years ago. On Passover, Jewish people around the globe gather together at the Seder, our special holiday meal, to tell the story of our liberation. We remind ourselves of the suffering we endured, the generations-long hardships we survived on the road to salvation. We remember this pain by eating what we call matzah, the bread of affliction, and maro, the bitter herbs. And we dip our food in salt water. Why? To commemorate our tears. Yet, this year, we did not need bitter herbs and salt water to remember the pain. Because this year, every Jewish family had an empty hole, a hole in their hearts. This year, every Jew focused on the atrocities of October 7th and the suffering of the Israeli hostages held in Hamas terror tunnels. We couldn't really celebrate our ancestors' liberation while our brothers and sisters are still waiting to be freed from the Hamas monsters. Yet, as my people marked this Passover with grief, the UN is again seeking to reward the perpetrators of the horrors. The UN couldn't care less about Israel. To hell with our safety, to hell with our future, and to hell with our hostages. The General Assembly is fueled by nothing other than political interests. Not by the UN Charter, not by morality. And nothing exemplifies the UN's rotten values more than the advancement of a Palestinian statehood. No, nothing can reward and incentivize the terrorists that committed the October 7th massacre more than this discussion here today. To this day, you have not even condemned Hamas, not even once. To this day, not a single UN initiative has been taken for the sake of the hostages, the Israeli hostages. Yet instead, this body has focused only on recognizing a Palestinian terror state, unilaterally. An entity fueled by Jewish genocide, by terror, by Nazi-like incitement. You know, by advancing a Palestinian state, you are telling the child-murdering Hamas rapists that terror pays off. You have done nothing for the victims, but have mobilized for the murderers. It makes me want to vomit. Yes, vomit. You know that the Palestinian Authority doesn't meet the criteria for statehood. No Palestinian leader, not a single one of them, has even condemned Hamas or their massacre. You prefer another rogue state and to hell with the Jewish state. The Palestinian Authority is paying salaries, think of it, paying salaries to the very terrorists that invaded Israel and murdered 1,200 innocent Israelis. This is who you want to grant Statehood to granting full UN membership to the Palestinians will only have two destructive results. Number one, it will further incentivize terror, as I explained. And number two, it is a clear message to the Palestinians that they never, ever have to sit at the negotiating table, let alone to make any compromises. Everyone who understands something about negotiations can understand what I just said. The Palestinians have rejected in the past every peace plan ever made, and they continue to support terror and boycott any negotiations. And now they know that their rejectionism pays off. 
Look at this discussion. These UN sessions will be remembered in the future as one of the primary obstacles to resolving the conflict. Remember my words. The UN today is the main impediment to peace. You, most of you, you that supports a forced unilateral establishment of a terror state, a Palestinian terror state, is an obstacle to peace. You are the dream come true for every Palestinian terrorist that seeks to destroy Israel through diplomatic terror. Because without your support, the Palestinians would have had to internalize that negotiations and mutual compromises are the only way forward. That's how you make peace. You should be ashamed of yourself, those who support a unilateral forced Palestinian terror state. Colleagues, during the Holocaust, there were the Nazis, there were collaborators, and there were those who turned a blind eye to genocide. All of them, all were guilty. And today there are modern day Hitlers, such as Yichye Sinwar and Ayatollah Khamenei. There are Nazi terrorists like Hamas, Hezbollah and the Revolutionary Guard in Iran. And there are collaborators and those who turn a blind eye, just like the UN and its agencies today, such as UNRWA, OCHA, UN Women, just like, sadly, so many here in the General Assembly. This body reeks of anti-Semitism. It's everywhere. The UN cares nothing for Israeli blood. Nothing, nothing, zero. It is a collaborator with the Nazis of our day. Working to ensure Hamas's survival and even reward them for murder and rape. I have no words. The Palestinians have rejected, I'll say it again, every peace plan. They rejected every peace plan because to them, the existence of a Jewish state is unacceptable. This is not about land. And if you need more proof, well, take a drive to Columbia University or to New York University. Listen to the murderous cries of the pro-Palestinians mobs. Look at their violence. Hear their calls for the genocide of Jews and Israelis. From the river to the sea, these mobs across the United States and Europe, they expose the truth. They have removed the mask of the Palestinian, Palestinian authorities' lies. The anti-Semites failed to annihilate us during the Holocaust. They failed in 1948, in 1967, and in 1973. But today, they are attempting again. This time, not only through terror and war, like we've seen on October 7th, but also through UN wep weaponization and the exploitation of UN bodies. That's how they want to achieve their goal. And here is what they scream, and I quote, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. So for those of you that automatically vote against Israel with no understanding, I'll explain. They want a Palestine that stretches from the Jordan River, Israel's eastern border, to the Mediterranean Sea, Israel's western border. A free Palestine means that Israel doesn't exist. That's what they mean. And they have another chant. We don't want no two state, we just want 48. I'll remind you what they mean. They want to return to the situation before Israel's war of independence in 1948, after they rejected the partition plan that was accepted here in 1947. They want to erase Israel. The chants of the pro-Palestinian rioters on campuses are calls for Israel's destruction. We always knew that Hamas hides in schools. We just didn't realize that it's not only schools in Gaza, it's also Harvard, Columbia, and many elite universities. This is what we hear at academic institutions across 
the world and they directly represent the Palestinians' goal. The only solution for them is a single Palestinian state that is Judenrein, Jew-free, from the river to the sea, achieved through repeated October 7th against Israel and also against Jews. And you here are collaborating with them and encouraging their racism and anti-Semitism. Just as Germany was the world capital of science and, and culture, yet it was there that Nazism was born and spread, history is now repeating itself. Elite universities, supposed bastions of liberalism and academia have now become the breeding ground for the most heinous racism and bigotry. Those that carry on the Nazis' race theory today are restoring to violence, shattering windows, attacking Jewish students, and calling for their removal from campus. The images that have come out of Columbia University are reminiscent of Kristallnacht. Just yesterday, over 100 violent pro-Palestine Nazi agitators were arrested at Columbia University. Or University. Swift and severe action must be taken against faculty that back this mayhem. University presidents and professors today must be held accountable for permitting this. Students who call for the murder of their peers or use physical violence must be arrested and expelled. But this brainwashing did not happen overnight. It was the result of years of incitement and delegitimization here, here at the UN. And do you know who it is, who it is that set the stage for this blatant anti-Semitism? The UN, the General Assembly, the anti-Israel vitriol spread here by this organization is what sparked what we are seeing today on college campuses by falsely, falsely condemning Israel and marking the Jewish state as the foundation of all evil, you are emboldening anti-Semites and terrorists alike. It is because of you that these mobs think that attacking Jews is acceptable, that calling for the deaths of Israelis is tolerable. Universities are permitting this Nazi-like behavior because for decades, decades, the UN's anti-Israel stance has been justified by this very body, the General Assembly. Look at the damage you have caused. Look at the generations you have indoctrinated. This is the final moment for the UN, I'm telling you, to show that it remembers the reason it was established in the wake of the Holocaust to prevent atrocities against Jews. Wake up! I call on the Secretary General and on leaders around the globe to stop hiding behind empty words. There is no freedom to incite murder and violence, and there is no liberty to attack Jewish students. Whoever does not stand against the abhorrent anti-Semitism is a collaborator. But just as it says in the Bible regarding the Egyptians' treatment of the Israelites, But the more they were oppressed, the Israelites, the more they increased and spread. Remember these words from the Bible. The UN chooses to continue singling out the Jewish people, but we will only grow more resilient and thrive. Colleagues, today marks the ninth, ninth General Assembly meeting held on Gaza since Hamas's massacre. Ninth. Not one of the meetings focused on condemning Hamas or releasing the hostages. Not even one. I'm disgusted by this institution. But if an alien landed on Earth, it would be certain that outside of Gaza, the rest of the world is a utopia. A war is currently raging in Sudan, where tens of thousands have been killed and millions are on the brink of starvation. 
How many G G General Assembly sessions have been held on Sudan? Do you know? Zero. What about the war in Myanmar? 50,000 have been killed and the war rages into its fourth year. How many times has the General Assembly met and how many resolutions been passed? How about Yemen, where the Houthis dragged the country to disaster? Hundreds of thousands are dead and tens of millions are literally starving. All while the Houthis also fire drones and missiles at merchant vessels in the Red Sea. Where is the Assembly's voice about the Houthis and Yemen? Is this not worth an emergency session? Let's continue to Pakistan. Pakistan is in the process of forcefully displacing 1.3 million Afghans back under the Taliban's radical control. Have you convened to condemn this? Oh, and what about Iran? The Ayatollah regime executes thousands of women, protesters, and members of the LGBTQ community, while Iran is hurtling towards nuclear weapons. Oh, and mere weeks ago, the regime launched 350 drones and missiles at Israel. Is this not enough for the General Assembly to discuss this murderous regime? But you are not interested in criticizing rogue states. You are interested only in smearing the Jewish state. Do you not see how much of a joke the UN has become? A sick joke that cares nothing for the lives of civilians around the world that cares nothing for wars being fought, that cares nothing for death, destruction, and suffering. The only thing that the UN cares about is bashing the Jewish state. You don't really care about the Palestinians. You don't care about the Palestinians in Lebanon that are living under a real apartheid regime, or Palestinians in Syria displaced or murdered by the Assad regime. And the UN was silent for all the years that Hamas oppressed Gazans and turned Gaza into the war machine that it is. You only care about the Palestinians when you can blame Israel. Today the UN is a haven for terrorists, for tyrants, for dictators. A laundromat to whitewash their crimes while shifting the focus to the vibrant democracy of Israel. And the root of all the UN's evil is the very, this very room, the General Assembly, with its political makeup. This is the body where human rights abusers have the same voice as law-abiding democracies. And it is in this hall, through distorted politics, that everybody and role in the UN system is decided. This is the beating heart of the UN's impotence. It is multilateralism's original scene. Here, the, the General Assembly, it's only politics and interests that are behind who sits on the Security Council. You chose to have Iran chair a human rights forum. You elect judges from Lebanon and Somalia to the International Court of Justice. You put human rights abusers like Cuba on the Human Rights Council. This is what the UN is. And you all continue playing this charade as if this institution still holds any value whatsoever. This organization burns over $70 billion a year. And what conflicts have the UN resolved? Which human rights violations has it ended? Almost zero. The UN is only escalating wars and human rights violations. You can continue this game of make-believe, but the UN's clock is ticking. I'm telling you, it's ticking. Because soon, the world will wake up and see the disaster that the UN has become. In the future, remember my words, students will study the fall of the UN. They will learn of this organization's moral bankruptcy and blindness. blindness. They will be taught that your indifference and hypocrisy is what brought the UN crashing down. But this is also what will prompt the establishment of a new world institution, a force for good, one with a strong moral compass, democratic values, 
a body that will refuse to give dictators a free pass and terrorists a lifeline. Mark my words, the UN's days are numbered. Colleagues, on Passover, the Jewish people commemorate our exodus from Egypt. Egypt was a world superpower, yet we were victorious. This has been the story of the Jewish people from that day forward. We all recite this every Passover. Vehi sheamda laavotenu velanu, shelo echad bilvad amad alenu lechalotenu, ela shebechol dor vador omdim alenu lechalotenu, veakadosh baruchu matzilenu miyadam. And God's promises, God, and God's promise is what has stood by our ancestors and us. For it was not only one man that rose up to destroy us, but in every generation people rise up to destroy us, and God saves us from their hands. Remember, many have tried to destroy us, from the most powerful of empires to the most evil of decrees, but all have failed. We are the eternal people. And Israel is here to stay. Thank you, Mr. President.